Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and it's my privilege to review a book which um, I found fascinating to look at having done the tour of the UK Supreme Court and uh, I found the book fascinating. It's called the UK Supreme Court Yearbook. It's covering the years 2016 to 17. It's volume 8 and it's been edited by Daniel Clary and it's from the Appellate Press. This is the book here. It's a heavy book, hardback. There we go, you can see the spine. There's nothing on the back with the spine there. It's a heavy book too. It's running to something approaching 650 pages. Um, there's no index as such at the back. There are tables of cases right at the back. So you get some idea of what the Supreme Court's been up to. It's split into various parts, but if I go to the front of it, you can see something that... Uh, I just want to point out something right at the beginning. A drawing by um, our colleague Isabel Williams, right at the beginning. and see a nice little drawing there to depict what it's like actually to be in the Supreme Court. That's the front page. Um, there's the UK Supreme Court structure of the, what is actually in it. The detail then there's an editorial board headed by a uh, Dr Clary and there's an advisory board of all of the basically of the main players from the Supreme Court then you've got a forward and various other detail there and then you've got the various parts structured all the way through um, with with information from all uh, many of the many of the names you will know there's a forward which then comes into play from Lord Newberger and then you can see the book running through. Um, it's a, there's a lot of detail all the way through. You can see there's paragraph numbering to try and uh, set things uh, in some semblance of order and footnotes. Uh, but as I say, there's no index actually at the back. Um, this particular part here is Northern Ireland Constitution before the United Kingdom Supreme Court and so forth. It's a lot of detail. Then the European dimension is very important, of course, bearing in mind what's happening um, this year and next year and then criminal law evidence and procedure. So you've got a very wide amount of information at your fingertips if you're interested in what the Supreme Court does. I certainly am. And I think like most people, both uh, lawyers, historians and uh, undergraduates as well, I think this is an important book for everybody to, to know about and to actually have a quick flick through if you're not looking very specifically for uh, particular cases or particular issues. But I, th I certainly think it's an invaluable addition to what we have by way of uh, information about the Supreme Court. Now Elizabeth and I talked about this book and our title for the review is For Learned and Lucid Comment on a Turbulent Legal Year Have a Read of the UK Supreme Court Yearbook. As I say, we're talking of the year 2016 to 17 so I'm recording this in the earlier part of 2018 but it's it's all stuff that's pretty new. Now what do we say? We say this as well as lawyers and judges general readers with an interest in the law will find this latest edition of the UK Supreme Court yearbook quite fascinating reading especially the substantially large section of which concerns the ramifications of Brexit which as I said is the European dimension and I think that's important because that that has dominated much of what's been going on. Now the book's divided into four main parts. The yearbook devotes part two to this vexed subject I Brexit with a forward by Lord Panic, Queen's Council, well was a surprise, covers <laughs> in almost minute detail the well-documented and much publicised Gina Miller case. Now most people will be familiar with Miller. Uh, she'd certainly go down in history as a champion of the principle of parliamentary sovereignty, having fought her corner in the Supreme Court, triumph, triumphing uh, eventually by a majority of eight to three. Um, and of course that didn't go down well with quite a few people but she made her point and yes there were dissenting views also amply uh, discussed in the yearbook. Now nonetheless Panic, who is lead counsel for Miller reminds us that the Supreme Court's decision clarifies a point of fundamental constitutional importance. And I believe this is important not just for lawyers but for politicians and historians. Ministers, he explains, could not notify the UK's intention to withdraw from the EU under Article 50 without express authorisation by an Act of Parliament. Furthermore, the government could not act under the Royal Prerogative to implement the June 2016 referendum vote to leave the EU. That, of course, being the crux of the matter. 
It's also pointed out in Panics Forward that the Gina Miller case was the first to attract a mass audience, and it was big across the full range of social and print media. And, as I've said, having visited the Supreme Court and done the actual tour, one can now understand how important it is and how modern the approach the court has to explaining what it does and how it arrives at its decisions to a much wider public. And I'm very grateful that we have that after the years where there's always been that mystique over the way some of the courts have actually carried out their functions. Now, it's, a, it's startling to recall the enemies of the people jibe proclaimed by one mass circulation newspaper. Such comments, says Panic, were atypical of public understanding of the legal issues, adding that the case did much to educate people about the virtues of our legal system. And I think to a certain extent he's right, but I believe there's a lot of work still to be done because, frankly, many people do not know what judges do, they don't know what barristers do, and there is that mystique, as I've said, which is a problem, and we need to dispel that. And the way can we can do that is with new technology. And, of course, the Supreme Court uses new technology, which I think is a marvellous step forward. And now we hasten to add that the significance of this particular case is one issue out of many examined in the yearbook of almost 700 pages in length. A part four, for instance, is the legal year and overview. And it gives um, learned and lucid comment on over 20 areas of law, ranging from administrative and constitutional law to civil procedure, company law, corporate governance to some, and uh, criminal law, through to restitution and unjust enrichment and tax law. So it covers a very wide spectrum of substantive law issues. Particularly worthy of note, we think, is the forward to the yearbook by Lord Newberger, who on approaching retirement, he's now gone, uh, offers a glance in the judicial rearview mirror. 1996 to 19, <coughs> um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's actually to 2017, from a judge's perspective, so I've got eight slightly wrong there. In terms of the constitution, politics, the rule of law and the judiciary itself, he says, the 21 years which he spent on the bench seem to have been a pretty eventful, almost a revolutionary period for the United Kingdom. That's a long time, 1996 to 2017. And the past two decades have indeed been a period of significant change, the most notable of which, says Newberger, in terms of the constitutional structure of the UK, was the creation in 1998 of devolved governments in Scotland and Wales and the reformation of a devolved government in Northern Ireland. <coughs> As I say, that that is devolution, the continuing development of that as as attitudes change. Now let me conclude by saying that in examining it does the institutional and jurisprudential aspects of the UK Supreme Court over the course of a legal year. The yearbook provides any number of enlightened insights into the turbulent times in which we live. You could almost refer to it as a chronicle of social and attitudinal change of which all well-informed legal professionals should be aware. And as such, it is certainly an essential acquisition for the well-stocked legal library. Uh, and I certainly believe that this will be uh, of, of great use to a very wide range of people as we see um, how the Supreme Court develops in the in the coming years. The publication date is stated as at the 16th of February 2018 and I'm recording this a couple of months later. There's the book itself again, that's the front page, as I say the spine, there's nothing much on the spine as such. If I just open it in the middle, this is Miller and Northern Ireland, a critical constitutional response. It does tend to take up quite a lot of the book um, but I've concentrated on that. Obviously, I've got the European dimension. And then we get then to human rights dimensions, which, again, I think are important because one of the difficulties, I have to say, with the work of the Supreme Court is you are getting, when you start looking at what's in the yearbook, to the major political issues of the year, and not just the, uh, obviously, the legal hard cases, but the very substantial uh, political and, of course, constitutional issues. 
that is why this book has its own wealth of detail, which I think is extremely helpful for all. Very big thank you, anyway, to all the people involved, to, uh, specific, uh, specifically to Dr. Clary for producing this work. And uh, once again, I'm very grateful to all the people concerned for the tremendous amount of, of, of work in the contributions that have built it up into such an eminent book. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.